ready to get in our Father's Word, chapter 4, verse 10 of the great book of Peter. We completed in the last lecture with that ninth verse, and it said, if you're going to be hospitable to someone, um, do it to, um, to another, that is, without, do it without grudging. In other words, if, if you're going to help somebody and then gripe about it, it's better you don't help. Because all, you haven't helped the person, you maybe lifted them up and then dropped them real hard. Okay, if you're going to help somebody, do it with a willing, cheerful heart. Okay, and that's the beauty of helping someone, is the fact that it is a brother or a sister in in the father, and um, it it always um, blesses the father in helping one of his own children. So. Never uh, help someone and grudge about it. That just, that doesn't, you rob yourself of the blessing, okay? So having said that, a word of wisdom from our Father, First uh, Peter, that old fisherman, uh, a teacher of teachers, let's go with it. He lays it out plain and level with that word of wisdom from our Father. Chapter 4, verse 10, and it reads, As every man hath received the gift... Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That is to say, the very love of God. This word gift is charis in the uh, Greek, and it, it's, it's, it's uh, charisma. In other words, when he gives you a gift, it has it. That person has charisma in delivering that. And, uh, and, and, it, and it's obvious that that person has it, that is to say, a gift from God. And don't ever think that man loses that gift. God gives his gift without repentance, Romans chapter 11. And, and uh, he expects you, especially if you're one of God's elect, he gives that gift, and you may slip and you may fall, but he expects you to get back in the harness and pull that plow. I mean, keep plowing and plow deep. Uh, for, for the gift, the charisma, is given without repentance. And he expects you to cut it, get it done. Okay. Verse 11. If any man speak or preach, let him speak as the oracles of God. Let, let him stick with the Scripture, with God's Word, not his own. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. In other words, stay within the ability that he gives you, don't, don't, uh, and stay within the scripture of God. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. And stick to the manuscripts. One of the greatest gifts of teaching that God can give you is the ability to handle languages whereby you can uh, check out the oracles of God from the original, okay, the languages whereby you can bring forth the full meaning. And, and um, why do you do that? The reason being, listen carefully, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In other words, it's eternal. <clears throat> it isn't a passing thing. It's not something here today and gone tomorrow. It's something you can drop your anchor in and hold. <clears throat> it will never let you down. That is to say, our Father. That Word will always be with you. Why? Because you don't change it. You keep it as it is, as God spoke it. That's exactly the way it is. And that's, how, that's what brings His blessings, is when you stick with that, when you hold to that. And... Um, uh, the reason then for, the, in other words, is to glorify God, for He loves His children. And it brings praise to our Father, and that brings blessings to you. Don't ever forget that. Verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. When, when, when you're a Christian... And when fiery trials hit you, because Satan is the prince of darkness, don't, don't think it's some strange thing. Satan has in hand most of the non-believers. 
So naturally, he's going to try for you a little harder than anyone else. So you have to you have to be prepared for Christ has given you power and authority over all of your enemies, including Satan. And you don't have anything to worry about. Do you remember when these trials hit you? And you, if you ever have any little bitty doubt at all, always remember what we read in chapter 3 in verse 12. Okay, Can you remember it? Let me read it to you. In chapter 3, verse 12 of this same book, 1 Peter, we read, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. That is to say, the eyes of the Lord are over those that do what's right. Okay. And his ears are open unto their prayers. His ears are open to those that do what's right. Okay. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Don't ever forget that. In other words, if someone casts a fiery dart at you, that, that's to say a word of, from Satan. Okay, Because you put on the gospel armor and that enables you to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. They can't hurt you. They can't hurt you at all. Why? Because he, he's afraid of you when you utilize the name and the power of Jesus Christ. He, he has to run from you. He has to be afraid of you. When as a child of God, you stand your ground. We take ground. We don't give it up. We have the victory in him. He paid that price, and we march in his service. And that's exactly the way it is. So don't ever let a few of the fiery trials that happen in this lifetime bother you. Verse 13, but, but what? But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. In other words, when you suffer for doing what's right, God's watching, don't worry, he'll take up the slack, as I've said in the last lecture. You have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. And yeah, it might be a little uncomfortable at times, but at the same time, you rejoice. And if anything, pray for those that abuse you or would cast one of those fiery darts because Satan's going to take care of business. There, he, will, he will even... Our Father, he, he, um, he, he gets even with everything. There is a, our Father has a set rule. If you pronounce a sentence on one of God's children, you turn it around and pass it on your own neck. Okay. In, in God's Word from beginning, from the beginning of time, anytime somebody come against a servant of God, that that they try against them falls on their own head. Okay. So you want to be careful what you wish bad about one of God's election. After all, do you remember chapter 1, verse 2, what it said? This book is written to God's elect and to all those that believe as it falls in their place. So don't let those little fiery darts upset you. They, they happen to all of God's children. And th that's, that's no step for a stepper, okay? We can cut it. And when, when you do that... You are a partaker in the very victory itself. Verse 14, listen carefully. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. I don't want you to read over something. Many people are confused about, well, explain to me the Holy Spirit. You see, it's answered in that verse, and I don't want you to read over it. What spirit rests upon you? The Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? For the Spirit of glory, that's to say the Holy Spirit, and of God. And it is the Spirit of God, okay, of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. And that's why that's, that His Spirit, when it rests upon you, He has His eyes upon you, His ears are open to, to you when you do what is right. 
That's a good place to be, my friend. And as a Christian, that's where you are. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. In other words, don't butt into another man's business and judgment and so forth. God is judge, and you have no business butting into someone else's business. Uh, let it be. Let God take care of it, and he will. There, there are, there are um, um, exceptions to every rule in taking care of your family and so forth and, and protecting against those that would harm you. In other words, a man that will not protect his own family is worse than an infidel. So you want to always have the authority and uh, carry it well to protect your family from that that would harm them, okay? And um, it is nice even, let, let's, let's, we'll go some actual facts here. Naturally, the first thing to have over your home is Almighty God. But then, um, in rural America, as many of us in this nation live, it would seem that most laws are set for big cities where you have um, uh, aid pretty close by. But some of us live in the rural area where basically, if you have instant trouble, you are the law, okay? So you'd better be able to protect or take care of business because it would be hours before any help from anyone else could come. <clears throat> so um, you have God there on your part, but you protect your family, okay? That's the rule. But uh, what, well, what allows you to do that? The, the Holy Spirit. And many, I know there are some... Johnny do-gooders that would say, well, my goodness, you know, a Christian never would harm another person. Uh, that's not what God's Word teaches. If that, you know, if you won't protect your own family, you're worse than an infidel. Uh, and that, that's what God's Word says in the great book of Timothy. And um, Psalms 144 said, Lord, teach my hands to war against the enemy and give me power and strength okay to war against that that is evil those fiery darts and to know that god is with you okay so uh, a, a word to the wise is sufficient um we christians are not second class citizens we take care of business verse 15 but let none of you su oh, we got that. Verse, you, none of you will. Okay, 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, that's to say a Christ man, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Now in all of the manuscripts, the, the ancient manuscripts, this word behalf is name. Okay. And, and, and let me reread it. But let him glorify God on this name, on this name's behalf. Okay. What name is that? Christ. Okay. Christian. That means that uh, you are a man or a woman or a child that follows Christ. Well, well, exactly what would that mean? Well, what did God say back in chapter 3, verse 12? If you do what's right, his eyes are upon you. If you do what's right, his ears hear your prayers. He's watching over you. He's assisting you. He's helping you. So uh, certainly let him glorify God because of Christ, for he does these things for us. He gives that power. He gives us this ability. He gives us the knowledge. And his name is so precious, Yeshua, Yahweh's Savior. Verse 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first began at us, right at the, in the pulpit, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Question, well, I think we know. They're going to hell. If they don't do a lot of changing, especially in the millennium, if they don't know any better, then uh, they, they have a one-way ticket and, and it's punched. Okay already collected. Uh, 
but the, the trip will not transpire until after Judgment Day, of course, and no man should judge any other man. But at the same time, do what's right for that name. You cannot imagine, or you know, it is difficult to imagine the power that God places in, at your disposal when you carry that name, Christian. God loves you for that. It is, a glor it, is, it is glorification to Almighty God Himself because you're part of the family. And that family makes up the many-membered body, the very uh, body of Christ in these end times especially. Again, this book is written to God's elect. And the elect, and during the parable of the, the fig tree, have a, an awesome responsibility but a simple task. And that's to stay true. And, and, and be honest with Almighty God. And when He gives you His personal, you, if, they, if they mock you, if they make light of you, don't sweat it. I'll take care of them. I'm watching. I can, he can do it. Okay. And, and what you can't take care, care of, I assure you, He will. Right. You got nothing to worry about. That name is a priceless name. That name is you, you. You are. It is an honor for a person, whomsoever will, to carry that name and to consider yourself a part of it. And he says, "Welcome, come aboard, come to me." And and so it is with our Father. Okay, <clears throat> verse seventeen. For or did we get that? What verse do we have? Eighteen. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? The judgment begins at the pulpit. And you know, that's why when he said, if you're going to preach, let it be the oracles of God, not man's traditions. Or you're going to be in a heap of hurt. You'll be judged for it. And that's where judgment starts. I would, um, I would be very concerned if I had misled a group of people into the outer darkness and let them wander around and stumble and lose their souls. That would be an awesome response, something to be responsible for. Think about it. 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, I said the will of God, Commit the keeping of their souls, that's your eternal soul, to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. Our Father did. He created. We're there. We're it. We we're, carry that name. And we will be faithful to the very end. Why? Many are going to fall aside. And, and uh, that's, that's not good enough for our Father. Quite frankly, that's what this earth age is about is who will listen to the oracles of God. That is to say, the very words of God. To, 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 to love Him. For many think they love Him, but they would love the first Messiah that appears because that's the way they've been misled from the pulpit. And the first one that appears at the sixth trump is made very clear in the great book of revealing, Revelation, that that's Satan. And boy, does he have the fiery darts loaded and locked, ready to pierce the hearts and minds of the ignorant. That being simply those that have not studied God's letter, forewarning them of the chronological order of events that consummate the end of this age. And you're there. You don't want to wonder about it and stumble around in the dark. Chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort. I want to talk to you that are strong Christians, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. I was there, Peter said, remember? He denied him thrice. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. I've straightened out, I'm there. Okay. Verse 2, what are the instructions? Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, 
not by filthy lucre. Don't do it for money, but of a ready mind. You be ready to serve the flock, to feed them. Christ had said this to Peter three times because Peter would establish the church and it would grow from there to cover the world. It was feed my, he said, Peter, lovest thou me? Said, well, you know I do, Lord, well, feed my sheep. And then in the middle, he says, feed my lambs. And that's something many people forget. And you see, you must always teach on a level that those that are babes in Christ can hear that truth and be drawn to it. Don't go over their heads. Don't try to manhandle them. Be gentle, persuasive in the preaching of God's Word, whereby it edifies minds, builds them up. Verse 3, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Don't you try to lord it over anybody. Don't you go get in the big head just because God gives you the charisma to accomplish a certain thing. Why? Because it's his gift. It belongs to him. And you'd better be well give him credit for it instead of taking it for yourself. To know that God's in charge and that you lean and, and you are gentle and you are with the flock. Christ told you the way. Of, if you've got a hundred and one goes astray, help that one. Okay. That, that's how important it is. But don't, don't order... Uh, uh, concerning God's heritage by force. That's, that's not real love. When you have to force something, that is not love. That's taking advantage. God does not want his bishops. That, that's what an overseer is, okay? Um, you don't have to call it by that name, just responsible. Verse 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. If you do it that way, you're already promised a crown, okay? Do you know where that stands in the millennium? It's written in Ezekiel 44 of the Zadok. That's the elect. Verse 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. In other words, um, our Father appreciates those that are humble before Him. For he, he's the Father. Okay. And we all come under His banner. We all come under that name, Christ man. Verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. In other words, we've got the victory. You can be patient. Do it with, in God's will, and you'll be just fine. Verse 7, casting all care, your care upon him, for he careth for you. This word care is a worry or anxiety. Cast all your worries on him. Don't, don't be a worry wart. It'll shorten your life, and you don't want to mess with it. Let other people, if, they, if somebody's got to worry, it won't help a thing. If anything, it does damage. Uh, God has his what on you? His eyes. His ears are open to what? You that do right to you. And he knows how to take care of business so you can cast those anxieties onto him. He can cut it. Okay? He'll take care of business. Verse 8, be sober. Let's be sincere. Be vigilant. Be aware. Stay awake. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He's there. He'll try to saw the floor out from under you every time he gets a chance, because you're one of God's elect. You have eyes to see and ears to hear, and he wants you. you he considers you as his enemy. But never forget, as it is written in Luke chapter uh, 10, Verse 19, God, through the Son, has given you power over all of your enemies. Use it. That's what the name is about. And that's why the word behalf in verse 16 should be translated name as it is in the manuscripts, because it is that name, Christ's name, that gives you that authority. Verse 7, nine, rather 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith... How much faith you got, okay? 
knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, um, that same attack happens to every Christian. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. But every Christian is attacked by those uh, uh, temptations and fiery darts of Satan. So, so, so big deal. Okay. Well, it's not a big deal because you have power over it. Okay. You have peace of mind in Almighty God. Knowing that you cast your wor if you were worried about that, cast it on the Father, and He will break those darts before they even get close. Okay, and then at the same time, uh, Father expects He knows how much you can handle. Okay, He knows how tough you are. And as it is written in First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen, He will never burden you with more than you can cut. Okay. He will never let trials overtake you, and He will always, as it is written there, show you a way out. Just hang tough. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthen, settle you. Boy, I mean, you, you cannot imagine that, um, you know, when you read Ezekiel chapter 44, even in the millennium, when those are established and settled, final. And this has to do with now, too. When, when you are really in Him, the evil spirits run from you. You can order them around like, uh, uh, like little soldiers. Send them back where they came from naturally. Because it's not you that do it, but Christ. The name, Christian, Christ man, gives you that ability. It's a take charge type people. That Satan goes a long ways around and he has to slip up to try to catch you off guard. But he'll do it. He'll try. But it won't help him. It will do him no good whatsoever. For God is watching over those, and He will establish them. He will make them solid in any storm that comes along. Verse 11, To Him, to our Father, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That means eternal. We're not just talking uh, um, uh, here today, gone tomorrow. We're talking about <laughs> not just to the end of this life, your life, but we're talking about your eternal life with our Father because you've earned it. When you listen to Him, when you follow Him, and when you submit to Him in His will. Listen, our Father has a plan. He wrote the plan. He knows the plan. So don't ever argue with Him wanting your way. Let it be His will. And don't ever let some preacher tell you to pray in the will of God is weak. It isn't. It's powerful because it shows you have faith in God to want to do it His way, not man's way. Verse 12. But Silvanus, this is Silas that was with them, okay, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. In other words, um, where you stand, you make a stand. You stand for something or you stand for nothing. And you stand for Christ because you are a Christian. You are a Christ man. And with this letter, knowing you're to cast all your worries upon God, let Him take care of it. And take care of what you can first, okay? I'm talking about stuff you can't handle. Don't worry about it. Cast it on Him, because when you're doing what's right, or attempting to do what's right, His eyes are up on you, and His ears are open to you. Well, I just wonder if He hears me. I said His ears are open to you. Make a stand. Be somebody. Be a child of God. Humbly. 
holding that ground that is your heritage, it's your inheritance, granted by Almighty God. Verse 13, the church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, salute you. And so does Marcus, my son, is Mark Anthony, okay? It's uh, not literally his son, but in Christ, okay? Mark was uh, a vivacious young lad that was always following the, the disciples around and learning. And that's why his book is so uh, vivacious and moves and full of action. But here we have Peter signing off this first letter. And what a letter it is. And that old commercial fisherman could put it down whereby anyone could understand as far as worries are concerned, or somebody that might want to help and then begrudge somebody a little bit. No, don't, don't waste your time on that. And, and somebody that might worry a little bit, hey, let the Father handle it. He'll do it. And Father takes care of those that do what's right. That's what the fisherman said. And, that's what, and he said, the name Christ will accomplish you a great deal when you claim it and you wear it. Verse 14, to complete the first book of Peter. Greet you one another with a kiss of charity, that's to say of love. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you know something? When you are in Christ Jesus, then you have that name. You are Christian. And you have that peace. Do you know something? There is something that money cannot buy. And there is something in this world that uh, uh, is, is so very valuable is to have peace of mind, not to worry, to be able to cast your worries on Him, knowing, having the faith to know He'll take care of it, what I can't take care of myself. I'll take care of the little stuff that I can do. I'll hammer it out right real good. But what I can't, He will. And I know that. You should know it too. You know why? Because He loves you. You're His child. He created you because He wanted someone just like you. So, first book of Peter, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. We'll have the second one in the next lecture. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please?